Hello, beloved. This devotion is for Wednesday of the 23rd week after Pentecost, November 11th, 2020. We begin with our opening versicle. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Our psalm for the week is Psalm 70. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let them be put to shame and confusion who seek my life. Let them be turned back and brought to dishonor who desire my hurt. Let them turn back because of their shame who say, Aha! Aha! May all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who love your salvation say evermore, God is great. But I am poor and needy. Hasten to me, O God. You are my help and my deliverer. O Lord, do not delay. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our hymn for the week is hymn number 516 from Lutheran Service Book, Wake, Awake, for Night is Flying. Wake, awake, for night is flying. The watchmen on the heights are crying. Awake, Jerusalem, arise. Midnight hears the welcome voices, and at the thrilling cry rejoices. O oh, where are ye, ye virgins wise? The bridegroom comes awake, your lamps with gladness take. Alleluia! With bridal care yourselves prepare to meet the bridegroom who is near. Zion hears the watchman singing, and all her heart with joy is springing. She wakes, she rises from her gloom. For her Lord comes down all glorious, the strong in grace, in truth victorious. Her star is risen, her light is come. Now come, thou blessed one, Lord Jesus, God's own Son, Hail, Hosanna, we enter all the wedding hall to eat the supper at thy call. Now let all the heavens adore thee, let saints and angels sing before thee, with harp and cymbals clearest tone. Of one pearl, each shining portal, where joining with the choir immortal, we gather round thy radiant throne. No eye has seen the light, no ear has heard the might of thy glory. Therefore will we eternally sing hymns of praise and joy to thee. 
Today's reading is from the prophet Jeremiah, the 23rd chapter, beginning at verse 21. I did not send the prophets, yet they ran. I did not speak to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel, then they would have proclaimed my words to my people, and they would have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their deeds. Am I a God at hand, declares the Lord, and not a God far away? Can a man hide himself in secret places so that I cannot see him, declares the Lord? Do I not fill heaven and earth, declares the Lord? I have heard what the prophets have said who prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long shall there be lies in the heart of the prophets who prophesy lies and who prophesy the deceit of their own heart, who think to make my people forget my name by their dreams that they tell one another, even as their fathers forgot my name for Baal? Let the prophet who has a dream tell the dream, but let him who has my word speak my word faithfully. What has straw in common with wheat, declares the Lord? Is not my word like fire, declares the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces? Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, declares the Lord, who steal my words from one another. Behold, I am against the prophets, declares the Lord, who use their tongues and declare, declares the Lord. Behold, I am against those who prophesy lying dreams, declares the Lord, and who tell them, and lead my people astray by their lies and their recklessness when I did not send them or charge them. So they do not profit this people at all, declares the Lord. When one of this people, or a prophet, or a priest, asks you, What is the burden of the Lord? You shall say to them, You are the burden, and I will cast you off, declares the Lord. And as for the prophet, priest, or one of the people who says, The burden of the Lord, I will punish that man and his household. Thus shall you say, every one to his neighbor, and every one to his brother, What has the Lord answered? Or what has the Lord spoken? But the burden of the Lord you shall mention no more. For the burden is every man's own word, and you pervert the words of the living God, the Lord of hosts, our God. Thus you shall say to the prophet, What has the Lord answered you? Or what has the Lord spoken? But if you say the burden of the Lord, Thus says the Lord, Because you have said these words, The burden of the Lord, When I sent to you, saying, You shall not say the burden of the Lord. Therefore, behold, I will surely lift you up and cast you away from my presence, you and the city that I gave to you and your fathers. And I will bring upon you everlasting reproach and perpetual shame, which shall not be forgotten. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets, who have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, 
the oath which he swore to our father Abraham to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, send forth your Son to lead home his bride, the Church, that with all the company of the redeemed, we may finally enter into his eternal wedding feast. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today we remember St. Martin of Tours, pastor. We read from Celebrating the Saints by William Whedon. Martin was born into a heathen family in present-day Hungary, around A.D. 316. His father, a senior officer in the Roman army, was transferred to Lombardy. There Martin grew to manhood. He was reportedly but ten when, against his parents' wishes, he began attending church and even enrolled as a catechumen. When the young lad was but fifteen, he was conscripted to join the cavalry according to the custom of the time for children of officers. At eighteen, he was stationed in Gaul, present-day France. As a soldier, he once came upon a poor beggar wrapped in meager rags on a cold winter's day. Martin is said to have used his sword to slice his own cloak in two parts, giving half of it to the freezing beggar to wrap up in. Once, in the course of his military service, Martin felt that he could not join in a particular battle. I am a soldier of Christ, he protested. He was immediately arrested and jailed until it befell that the battle did not actually take place, the enemy suing for peace instead. Martin was eventually released, both from prison and from all obligation of military service. Freed at last to pursue his faith in freedom, he made his way to Poitiers. There he studied with the great Hilary, a famous teacher of the faith and confessor of the orthodox teaching of the Holy Trinity. Martin joined in the orthodox resistance to the imperial embrace of Arianism. In 371, he was lured to Tours on the pretense of visiting and praying with a sick man. Once there, he was acclaimed the city's bishop, a position he accepted only reluctantly. As bishop, Martin gave his energies toward the spread of Christianity among the natives of Gaul and the alleviation of the suffering of captives. He reportedly once ordered a pine tree chopped down that the locals worshipped. They agreed only if he would stand in the path. He did so, and the tree missed him as it fell. He thus won over the heathen to Christ. He was also remembered, with Ambrose of Milan, for unyielding opposition to the notion that the state should ever execute people for heresy. He experienced great sorrow when the emperor did not finally heed his warning and executed some of the Priscillian heretics. St. Martin died this day in 397, a man much loved and revered. The account of his charity and the gift of his cloak made the saint quite popular. The Frankish kings treasured his piece of the cloak, which they kept as a relic. It was on the day of this popular saint in 1483 that Hans and Margaret Luther brought their one-day-old son to the saving waters of baptism. Since it was St. Martin's Day, the child was named in honor of Martin of Tours, Martin Luther.
we pray. Lord God of hosts, your servant Martin, the soldier, embodied the spirit of sacrifice. He became a bishop in your church to defend the Catholic faith. Give us grace to follow in his steps, so that when our Lord returns, we may be clothed with the baptismal garment of righteousness and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We conclude with Luther's morning prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come before you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, order our days and our deeds in his peace. Amen. God bless your day, beloved.